Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here in Indy State's video. We're going to be going over the all new Hyundai Nexo. With that being said, let's get right into it. go over the Hyundai Nexo. Didn't even know this car existed. So first off, this is a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. So basically how this works is you have uh, the hydrogen fuel cell and that's kind of like what you use to fuel the car, which then powers electric battery packs. And so this drives like an EV because it has like similar set up to an EV, except the difference between this and an EV is an EV is going to be powered via you charging it into the wall, whereas this you're going to fill it up, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, power outputs on this are 161 horsepower and then 291 uh, pound-feet of torque. And then we have a driving range of 380 miles. This is the only hydrogen fuel cell SUV for sale. It's front wheel drive. It's only for sale in California. And it's only competitors, the Toyota Mirai technically, because that's hydrogen fuel cells well, but it's not, that's not an SUV. So this really doesn't have any competition and it's pretty expensive. It's like $60,000 uh, for the price. Now you guys saw the elements there on the front and then here to the side, still have Hyundai's crazy uh, styling here. And you guys can see the stylized fender flares and uh, notice how you've got the uh, badging to let everyone know what you're driving. And um, you know, in these uh, walk around reviews, I usually talk about the elements, but while I'm showing you guys the elements, I want to kind of talk about the hydrogen fuel cell technology and kind of where I see this going because uh, it's definitely had a lot of issues in terms of becoming uh, popular. So again, like I said, this is literally the only hydrogen fuel cell SUV for sale, period. It's front wheel drive and you can only buy it in California markets. Uh, the first thing that is going against these vehicles is just availability with fueling stations. There's not that many fueling stations for uh, hydrogen powered cars. And so that's definitely a big difficulty. And then the other difficulty is the cost. So if you take a, an SUV that is similar to this in terms of specs, that's a gas powered car, it's like half the price. And so it's, this isn't something that you buy because you're trying to save money. Um, you're paying for the technology. And uh, so that's kind of a that's kind of a difficult thing because at least with some electric cars now, uh, you can have kind of like a value proposition where you can say, hey, you know, over if you drive it this many miles, you know, compared to a gas car, then you will end up potentially saving this amount of money. And then I want to show you guys um, right here a couple other Hyundai's so you can kind of see size comparison uh, with it. Uh, that's a Tucson, I believe. And so you can kind of see the size and also door handles on it are funky, uh, similar to like the Range Rover uh, Velar. Um, and then you guys will see, especially here in the interior in terms of like the quality. I'm not saying it's bad interior, but like, again, uh, it's, it's nice, but it's not like a sixty thousand dollars nice like i when i saw the price of this after filming this video i was shocked completely shocked um but yeah so again fueling availability is an issue with these hydrogen powered cars and cost is an issue with these hydrogen powered cars as well and so that's definitely making it difficult for mainstream adoption however i do see a potential long-term benefit so if we can obviously improve technology over time to make these cars less expensive then hydrogen fuel cell cars could actually help with the adoption of evs believe it or not so here's here's what i you know, potential scene. Maybe, maybe I need to make like a Ben Hardy car company because of this. Just kidding. Not that smart. Um, but here's what I could see working out really well is, uh, producing a hydrogen fuel cell car that is also a regular plug-in, uh, EV. So you can basically, uh, similar to like a hybrid, uh, car right now, right? Like plug-in hybrids where it's gas powered, but then it also has the plug-in hybrid aspect. So you can technically drive with only using battery packs if you charge it at home and all that kind of stuff. They could do the same thing with the hydrogen fuel cell cars, I think. So what they could do is again, you can fill it up, uh, with the regular fuel, right. And that could charge the battery or you have the port, make it again, you know, plug in where you can charge it at home. And so then what it would do is it would obviously allow for a similar effect to what you have with plug in hybrids, where if someone just is doing their regular daily commute, that's not that long, then what they can do is just, you know, plug it in at home and they drive the, you know, 10, 20 miles, uh, you know, every single day to work into the grocery store and all that kind of stuff. And they just plug it in and that's it. But then when they want to go on a road trip, you know, like again, this has 380 miles of range and you can fill it up. Then they can use the hydrogen fuel cell uh, part of it 
So I don't know. I think that that would, you know, help with adoption of EVs because that would kind of, you know, again, it would make it more uh, practical. And that would also be a move away from uh, using uh, gasoline, right? But the big problem with that is, again, you'd have a need, to, you need to like already fundamentally do a bunch of infrastructure changes to, uh, build charging ports. And then you'd have to do more infrastructure changes to build hydrogen fuel cell gas stations. <laughs> and so I don't know if it would be worth it from a cost perspective, like all the money and time that goes into like restructuring everything away from gas stations, you might end up like hurting the environment even more by that point. So, uh, I don't know. Crazy out there idea. Let me know what you guys think on that. And uh, I guess we'll finish the uh, walk around because it's almost uh, done at this point. It's a pretty interesting. You guys can see with the uh, frames here, it's a pretty interesting vehicle overall. Like I thought this was weird. The cup holder on the side. I'm like, what? It's It's got some interesting elements uh, throughout the car. But I mean, it's, you know, if you've been in like a $30,000, $40,000 Hyundai, that's what the Nexo is. Again, if you are looking to buy this, you're buying it for the technology. That's really what you're paying for. So let's set off here in this 2021 Land Cruiser. And the last Land Cruiser I drove was actually a fully armored Land Cruiser. So uh, it's kind of a big difference, right? Going to this. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how this drives with the Icon suspension and everything. First off, it's so smooth, incredibly smooth. Also, the seats are very comfortable and uh, the bolstering on them is pretty open. So like you could be very, very large and still fit in these seats comfortably, which is a big plus. And, ooh, that V8 sounds great. So it's got a K&N air intake. And I mean, you can listen to this thing. sounds beautiful man just with a few tasteful mods you can turn the Land Cruiser into such a fun vehicle I'm gonna kind of uh, we don't have anyone behind us don't worry and the eight speeds so smooth uh, and I can comment that this uh, Icon suspension is great so Land Cruiser does kind of have a little bit of a floaty feeling similar to like a Jeep Wrangler for example but this thing drives amazing. It's super smooth. Yeah, the end, the engine transmission's fantastic. Steering too. It has a nice weighted feeling to it actually. I'm gonna take one more loop with this so we can kind of get a little bit more. I am super impressed with this though. 